build houses and settle down, plant gardens and eat what they produce, marry and have sons and daughters, find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Also seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have called you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, for if it prospers, you too will prosper. The relationship between the 24-7 prayer group and the Stanford and Coringham Schools Trust has grown over time and grown organically. It began with this um, uh, premise that it does take a village to bring up a child and that every energy that was needed to make sure that social barriers to children's learning was removed and it really, really didn't matter whether the people contributing to that journey were teachers or not. The relationship began in 2012 from a conversation that I, as head teacher of Gable Hall School, had with one of my key governors, Mr. Rob Harmon, about the needs that our children had. And we talked about the kinds of clientele who visited the bar and bus in the weekends because they needed a constructive place to go to, to be looked after in school as well. So it started small with a mindfulness place, a mindfulness space, um, the Toast Cafe, um, which then extended its menus to include donuts and drinks and coffee and ch hot chocolate after school. And you will never be able to underestimate the value of that on a cold winter's afternoon. It then became an area where they felt safe, where they could go and chat to people, where they could play games with people and generally share some of their confidences and some of their worries and anxieties. Um, obviously anything that was of a child protection nature was immediately passed on to us. We'd made sure that we, we um, had some training around that so that anything that was safeguarding was brought to our attention straight away and I have to say that worked incredibly well. More contributors from 24-7 joined the, the mentoring team and more children began to be referred um, to, the, to, the, to the program. By 2014, the team had grown to something like 14 individuals who were giving something like 20 days full-time equivalent a week to children in school. When we did an audit of the children who were reached to by this project, we realized that there was something like 100 children a year who were being touched by these projects. So a few years ago, the 24-7 uh, negotiated with the school, or we negotiated with them actually, I should say, for them to take on some of the education of these less um, engaged children, the more challenging children. And once again, it has proved invaluable. They have taken on science, they've taken on health and social care, and the children are coming out with actual qualifications and these are children that had they stayed in the school system would have not made it. And then their results came and they were better than our mean in school and we felt oh my god this is an untapped resource. For these kinds of children in these, in these groups um, you know 24-7 was more successful with them than we were in mainstream. So the outcomes for those children is down to 24-7 without a doubt. And I have to mention Charle Harmon at this point because her relationship with the school has, well, she's been here since the outset and she has developed with us, I think, and her, her whole approach to children, her, her caring of children, her follow-up with children, she doesn't leave anything to chance. In September 2016, Hassenbrook novated into the Stanford and Coringham Schools Trust. We um, came to Hassenbrook as leaders with our eyes wide open. We knew that um, while the schools were only one mile apart, there were very palpable social differences between the, the extractions of the children. 
And so we opened the chaplaincy room at Hassenbrook Academy and the cafe at Hassenbrook Academy. Could you just um, tell us a little bit how the work of Aspire has grown and TLG as well? We came to Aspire because in the, in the group that was in year eight in 2014, there was a phalanx of children there who we could see potential for success, but they were not succeeding in the mainstream because they needed to be enculturated to embrace their futures and their own potential. It is a combination of mentoring, classes, um, philosophy for children type sessions, um, visits to places of work so that the children can carve for themselves a path to the future. I go to the Aspire graduation every year. I've been there three times. And I'm a strong woman. Everybody will tell you that I'm a strong woman. But when I get to, um, to the Aspire um, graduation ceremony, I end up crying and not being able to make my speech every time. Because I can see the children before they went to Aspire. And I can see the mini adults that are standing in front of me telling me how they're going to rule the world telling me how they have found themselves and telling me how because people care, their lives are now worthwhile. And every year that gets me, and as you can see, it's getting me now. Um, and for me, that is the most important story. And that's what the 24 seven prayer group has done in this neighborhood. And that's why I work with them. And that's why we're so grateful. And that's why my teachers in this school and in the other schools that we work in who are skeptics in relation to faith can see from the work that they do that it is a meaningful outfit and that it does what matters and that transforms children's lives. And I cannot thank you enough. I cannot thank you enough. Hi, my name is Tracy Lee. I'm the principal here at Performers College, which is in Corringham in Essex. The connection with 24-7 prayer really began when uh, Sally Harmon's son, Ellis, trained here for three years at Performers College. And um, we forged a relationship and discussed ways that 24-7 prayer could potentially support our students while they're here because they come from all over the UK and international students, uh, so lots of homesickness, etc. Uh, we have to deal with. Within the first week, on induction week, 24-7 prayer come into the college, they greet all our new first-year students and our pre-vocational students. Um, they tell them about uh, the local area, bus routes, etc., where to go to the bank, um, and they are wonderful at offering um, a meal in the town centre. Um, I can't remember the name of the pizza place. Ramos, that's right. And uh, they have a, a lovely night out and it's so nice for, for them to sort of forge relationships from that point on. So that's one thing that always sticks in my mind. Um, and the other thing is a less happy occasion um, when we unfortunately lost one of our students through a very tragic accident but 24-7 prayer stepped in um, to really support those through bereavement and we had some really sad moments but some really wonderful moments where we set off balloons and lanterns and just talked and, and helped them get things off their chest. So, you know, good and bad, it always has a very positive outcome with 24-7 prayer. My name is Councillor James Horden, I'm the Conservative Councillor for the Homesteads Board and I'm the Cabinet Member for Education on Thurrock Council. I first got connected to 24-7 Press Stanford through one of my colleagues, my friend Phil Anderson, who was at the time a group leader on the council, introduced me to the church, not just to get to know a part of the church community, but also to get to know the sort of work the church is doing in our community and the awesome benefit that it is doing 
um, for local people and through that I got to know the Aspire programme that's doing so much good for our students in our schools right now. It's a fantastic scheme where you've got the local church community supporting schools trying to keep young people who perhaps are struggling in education stay in mainstream education. You know, quite often you hear the phrase alternative provision, what you do with young people who aren't really getting very far in schools. The, the problem is alternative provision is a really a bit of a misnomer because it's not alternative provision. Provision for young people should be a place in school. Now what Aspire is doing um, through 24-7 prayer is supporting young people in a pastoral way, keeping them integrated in school, supporting them along. It's, it's a wonderful scheme that it's, that it's um, enacting and it's really doing some positive work with young people to actually ensure that rather than either slipping through the net or going for the extreme alternative, which is perhaps a separate institution, they are being given that pastoral, emotional, moral support to actually carry on and actually grow and thrive in the institution that, where their parents sent them. Happy birthday, 24-7. Hi, we're Sunny Fruits and we'd like to wish you a happy 10th birthday and would you like two boxes of strawberries for 150? <laughs> I'm Varsha. I came to Corinum eight years ago. I was going through a difficult patch in my life, very difficult, and uh, I became a single mum with three young children. She's my youngest one. And she was only 14 months when we moved in here. So now I, sta I started as a single mum who was very scared. But now I've just built up confidence because of the community support. Can you tell us how you got introduced to 24-7 Press Stanford? Oh, my lovely friend. She's just, the moment I saw her, I was just like, I want to be her friend. <laughs> We met in mother and toddler group and uh, we had the same age girls. Um, when I found out that she was half Italian, I was brought up in Spain. We just hit it off straight away. And it was nice to see the girls playing up and they are still friends and so are we. And I've never had a bad word to say about her. Um, and I call her my angel because she is. And she calls me my yellow pages. Um, no, we just hit it off, we got on really well and then um, I was really happy when she invited me. She said, oh, can you come to my church as a guest for a dinner? And I was like, who, me? Uh, she said, yeah, we're allowed to bring friends. And I said, me, your friend? She said, yes, you're my friend. I said, how? I'm not, I, I don't want to go there because I feel like I'm going to be judged. Um, I had my own insecurities. I've been brought up in a non-school where there's a huge amount of judgments. So I was very scared of that. So I was sort of like, yes, because she, I had a new friend and yes, because of the kids, no, because of the religion side of it. But I don't think I have one day that I've come here and been dull. Um, the food, uh, the community, the people that they accept us for who we are, what we are, even with my eccentricities, because I do have uh, the really bad habit of swearing once in a while. Uh, but nobody ever says to me, language. They, nobody, they just let me be who I am. And it was the best thing I ever did. It's been, I think, eight years now. Mm -hmm. 